Okay, well, um, thank you all for uh, coming uh, along today and taking the time to uh, watch this uh, webinar by Predict Wind. Um, my name is Nick Olson. Uh, I've worked at Predict Wind for about eight years and uh, know pretty much everything there is to know about uh, our software, how it works and weather models and weather routing and departure planning. Um, and Iridium uh, Go products uh, in particular. Um, so today uh, I will be presenting and we will also have Kieran McMaster presenting. Kieran is the head of our support team and uh, she will be doing the presentation on the Iridium Go and the Iridium Go apps. So uh, this is uh, an introduction and sort of an overview of uh, what what, what we recommend that you would use uh, for an Atlantic crossing or any crossing for that matter. Uh, we're, the reason we call it the Atlantic crossing webinar is that that's just uh, something that a lot of people do at this time of the year or coming up in the next couple of months. Uh, uh, but this is really relevant for any coastal passage uh, or any, any crossing that you're doing. Um, so this webinar will be recorded uh, and the common questions will be um, sent out to you and answered. Uh, any questions that don't get answered in the Q&A box, you can, there's a Q&A box down the bottom of your screen. You can uh, ask questions in there. And we have uh, our amazing support team uh, there ready to answer questions. Um, so they can, they can probably answer most questions that you have along the way. Uh, and we will have a few sort of uh, questions at the end of anything that we've missed. Uh, so what are we going to cover off today? Uh, we are going to talk about, I'll do a little introduction to the Predict Wind apps uh, and tools. Uh, and then Kieran will talk about the Iridium Go and, uh, you know, why, why, we, why we use that uh, particular device. Um, and then she will talk and, and what, if you were going to get one, what you would get. So um, that might seem a little bit advertorial, but it's, uh, you know, what pe people uh, ask to know about. Um, yeah, and then the Iridium Go apps and their compatibility. And then I will uh, talk about the Predict Wind offshore app uh, and what platforms you can use the offshore app on. Um, and then we will go through um, some things like polars, uh, wave routing, uh, AIS, uh, the extreme weather, uh, rally tracking um, or buddy boats. And um, and then we'll have a, a little Q&A. So I will jump into a screen share. And over here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Predict Wind uh, has been around for, I think about 13 years now. Uh, we've, um, you know, so we've been doing this, this for a while. Uh, our, our goal is to is to keep people safe, really, um, to give them awesome tools uh, to that they can use anywhere, at any time to um, you know to get you to get your weather, uh, to get weather routing, to do departure planning, and uh, and a whole bunch of other information that comes in there. Uh, you'll see here we have all these weather models that we use. Uh, we don't just uh, offer any weather models. We offer. Uh, what uh, are proven to be the best weather models in the world. And um, I will talk more about how you deal with having all these weather models uh, in the routing later on, um, possibly in the next webinar. And we will go, you know, as we go through the, 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 the two webinars, uh, we, will, we will cover off uh, the different models. Let's come up here and I'll flick over to the apps. So, uh, and just the, I just mentioned then that there is a second webinar. So this time next week, there is a second webinar. The second webinar will be definitely more focused on the uh, Predict Wind offshore app and um, and how you will use that with your SAT communications or SSB and using that offshore and, and, and a lot more specifics. We will touch on some stuff today and uh, probably give you some uh, food for thought on how you... Uh, are going to use that and some stuff that you might want to look at before next week and, um, and, and, and begin to understand. So we have two main uh, ways of viewing uh, the, the, the information that we provide in Predict Wind. So we have the Predict Wind app and forecast website. So the Predict Wind app 
and is what you use when you are at the marina, uh, at home, um, or just anywhere out and about. Whenever you're in mobile, uh, you know, data range um, or Wi-Fi, you can use that. It, it's it's data hungry, so it's not. It doesn't work on a satellite connection. It doesn't save data offline. Uh, but there's a huge amount of information in there. And um, so, you know, if I'm going sailing with my kids, I use that. Um, but if I'm looking at planning a passage, I will also use the Predict Wind app or Forecast website. So that is available on uh, iOS. So your iPhone, your iPad, uh, your, your Android. So, you know, your Samsung tag, tablet or phone or, or whichever Android brand you have um, is where you can um, use the Predict Wind app. And the website obviously is just in a web browser. So then we come over to the uh, offshore app, which is really uh, a lot of what we're going to focus on in these in these two webinars, uh, because this is what uh, the piece of software that you use or the app that you use when you're um, offshore or whenever you go out of uh, mobile or Wi-Fi range. So it is designed to work with satellite connections. Uh, or SSB, it has a grib viewer in it. So what is a grib? A grib is just a way that we transfer weather files. So it's, don't need to worry about anything more than that. It's just a, a format, a standard format that's used. Um, and it's the, the offshore app, it, it compresses the files. And um, so makes the transfer of these files over a satellite connection easy. Um, yeah, it's when if, if, even if you are just doing a coastal passage, you would want to use the offshore app. Uh, that's what I do because it saves the data offline. So everything you download in it, until you replace that data, it's it, it's sitting there in the offshore app. So we will anyway. We'll cover more of that later. And um, before we go in there into uh, before I hand over to Kieran, I just sort of wanted to talk a little bit about. Uh, weather routing in particular and some of the tools around that and because it's sort of why we're here um, and why that's important. So weather routing, uh, whether you're in a, a yacht or a powerboat um, or even you know ships, ships use weather routing as well. It's really about seeing where you're going to be at any um, any stage in time. So you know if you depart today, where are you going to be tomorrow? Where are you going to be in five days? And so knowing where you're going to be in five days or three days or or in 24 hours is really important uh, for your for your safety and comfort. Um, and so knowing what, uh, you know, so that's why we do weather routing. Uh, the other side of, of weather routing uh, is departure planning. Uh, so it uses the same tool, but the departure planning, I don't know why that's done that. Let's just download it again. In fact, let's have a look at departure planning while we're there. Um, Departure planning gives you a, 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 a comparison of the different times that you could leave. So do I leave today, tomorrow, you know, the next day or whatever. And you can change those, those time periods in between. And so why, why we want to do that is it helps us find our weather window. There's a bunch of stuff that we would do beforehand. We would look at some real big picture stuff uh, before we looked at our departure planning. You know, we might look at pilot charts. Uh, we would look at uh, the forecast maps, you know, at a, at a, at a global scale. And, um, and then we might go, okay, you know, I'm going to depart in the next four days. I think that we're going to get a good weather window there. Um, but I've just run the departure planning. And so if I come over here, you can see here on this map, we've got quite a lot going on. You know, we've got these... Uh, these weather warnings here, which are graphical uh, GMDSS warnings. So you can see if I click on this here, <clears throat> there's a gale, um, you know, warning for this entire area, uh, you know, which is pretty, a pretty big area. Uh, that is, that comes from uh, the GMDSS service. Uh, they, it's written by a meteorologist. They define these areas. So each met area around the world has an, a part of the ocean they're responsible for, and they cover off these areas. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, you'll see here we also have all these warnings. Um, the, these are weather warnings. So we've, you've got, we've got roll, vertical acceleration and gust. So that's a, a pretty new thing that we've put in there. Um, and 
I will cover it more later, but essentially it is as we go through our uh, route and at these different departure times, it's giving us warnings to alert us to, to the fact that there's conditions there that we might not like. I've specifically chosen this, this um, route here uh, because I knew it was rough. Um, and when we go to the offshore app later, uh, we'll actually look at going from um, the Canaries over to the Caribbean. So as I mentioned, departure planning, we can look at the different times that we would depart. So if I leave on day one or day two or day three, you see here we have all these different uh, parameters that we can look at. And, you know, the maximum wind speed, the minimum wind speed, uh, the time upwind, the time reaching. And then we come down here and we see the time uh, uh, that we're, we've got more than four degrees RMS of roll. Uh, so it's not just four degrees of roll, it's actually just a, a factor. And uh, we know that above four, it becomes pretty uh, pretty dangerous and um, hard, to, hard to move around the boat. Same with vertical acceleration. It's, you know, you, 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 you can uh, guarantee, or not guarantee, but it will make people seasick. Seasickness is a pretty serious thing when you've uh, got a, a crew on board. Um, you know, all of a sudden you get uh, less people able to do things and, and it's not very good. So you can see all of these days uh, leaving, whichever day we leave at, it's pretty bad. It does get better as time goes on. So possibly we haven't chosen our uh, weather window very well there. So I just wanted to quickly look at that so that we could understand what, you know, what these tools do. Um, as I mentioned, weather routing is, if I click back there, we run a weather route, we can see where our boat is going to be at any stage in the weather system, and we can see, you know, how it's, how uh, the waves and the wind are going to affect our boat, and we can try and uh, optimise what we're doing and uh, to keep ourselves safe. So I won't go any further into that. I will actually hand over to uh, Kieran, and I'll let her, I'll stop sharing my screen, and I'll let her start talking about uh, the Iridium Go, and then once uh, Kieran has talked about that, I will come back and we will uh, talk about more weather routing uh, related stuff. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Um, yep, good. So my name is Kieran McMaster. I'm part of an amazing support team for Predict Wind. There's actually 15 of us on support. We only hire sailors um, because we want to have people that understand what's going to happen when you're actually out on the water. It's really important. Um, our support team is, is an amazing resource. We've got people that have done around the world a couple of times, delivery skippers, Olympic dinghies, sailors, um, you name it, we've got it on the team. We've got one of the best kite surfers in New Zealand works for us as well. So yeah, we're very experienced. We're not just a call center, so um, use us at any time. What I'm going to talk about um, is the Iridium Go. So you can actually get our weather forecasting through multiple sources. You could use um, SSB with Pactor Modem. You could use a Starlink. You could use a high-end satellite system. Um, you can do it through email. But what we've found is the Iridium Go is a really good system. It's cost-effective. It's pretty easy to use. And it's portable, so you can take it off the boat with you. And so um, we are the top marine seller for the Iridium Go's pretty much in the world. And um, at any given time, we've got about two and a half to 3,000 people using the Iridium Go around the world. And so we're really experienced with setting this up. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what you need with the Iridium Go and then a little bit about how to use it. And we'll go from there. So I'm just going to share my screen um, because I want to show you how to get the information and where to buy it from. Um, so all right, I'm just going here. So this is our Predict Wind website, predictwind.com. And if you come into here or if you search Predict Wind Iridium Go, you'll end up on this page. You want to go up to products here and then choose Iridium Go. So we sell other products as well, um, but predominantly the Iridium Go. So this is the unit. It's It fits in the palm of your hand, so it's not a big unit. Um, and we sell three options really. So if I scroll down here, you can see you can buy the Iridium Go as a standalone unit. You can buy what we call our marine package, which has the external antenna with it. Or you can buy the complete package, which also has 
the external antenna and a YB3I dedicated GPS tracking device. So the Iridium Go is a Wi-Fi base station, sort of like your router at home for your boat. So once you leave port and you don't have cellular connection at all, how are you going to get all the data that you need? The, you know, how are you going to SMS and email and download weather data and make phone calls? The Iridium Go is really cost effective and we think it's the best one. I use it when I help deliver boats. Um, the last time was to Fiji a few months ago. And it's a great way to stay in touch with friends and family to do your GPS tracking. It's an SOS device. So if you had an emergency, you could push the SOS button and it would start sending out alerts about where you are. Um, yeah, and it's and it's not too expensive. So what we recommend at the very minimum is the marine pack, which is this one. The reason we do that is because the Iridium Go, you want to keep it downstairs in the nav station safe and dry, but you want to have the external antenna kit that places in a, this white dome external antenna outside um, so you can get a really good signal but have your Iridium Go inside the boat. And what you do is you connect your mobile devices to this Iridium Go through Wi-Fi. So if you wanted to make a phone call, for example, you would have your mobile phone connected to the Iridium Go and you would use um, a dedicated app that you've loaded onto your phone called the Iridium Go app and you would make a phone call through that. So to set your expectation, the Iridium Go is fantastic for sending SMS messages, for making voice phone calls, for sending very basic emails, and for downloading weather data. We've configured our whole offshore app to work perfectly with the Iridium Go, um, but things you can't do, you can't do your internet banking, you can't do YouTube, you can't do Facebook, can't do Twitter, all of those things. So it is very much just for basic communications and um, getting your weather data. The reason that you would get this complete package, which includes the Iridium, uh, the YB3i, is this is a dedicated GPS tracking device. Now, the Iridium Go itself can send position reports to us, and we can set up this really cool tracking page for you to share with family and friends, and Nick will go into that. Um, but the YB3i actually sits on the back of the boat and is a really cheap $20 a month way to send and receive position reports. So why would you need that? When you cross oceans, you want to have the Iridium go for the satellite communication. But once you get to port, you don't really need the Iridium go. So you can turn it on and off. It's a month by month contract. So you could use it for a month and a half or two months and then turn it off. The reason to have the YB3i is to continue tracking so that you can record your positions. Um, you know, people love sharing that with family and friends. And so this, um, having the YB3i as well, is an awesome way to carry that on, even though you don't have to have the, uh, the monthly, the more costly airtime plan. The other reason to have the YB3i is it's actually a backup communication device. You can send and receive um, messages through that if for whatever reason your Iridium Go went down or you had problems on the boat. So you basically with this package you've got a backup uh, communication device as well. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Um, with every Iridium Go we sell we offer a free SIM card and you should really look at getting more than one SIM card. The reason is um, you, you can use the Iridium Go for a short amount of time, like two months to cross the Atlantic, and then you can turn it off so you don't have to pay the monthly airtime plan. But then you want to come back across um, at the end of your season, you need to restart the Iridium Go. So you can't actually reactivate a SIM card, but you can start a new one. So most people will buy three or four SIM cards and have them sitting in the chart table. It's the most cost-effective way to stop and then restart the Iridium Go when you need it. Um, so when you're buying one, definitely throw a couple of extras in there. Um, when you receive the Iridium Go, then you activate it. So it doesn't come activated, it comes to you on hold. And to activate the Iridium Go, you activate a SIM card. So you choose one of the ones that you've got, and then you can buy one of these three plans. So we have three plans on offer, <clears throat> excuse me the basic, the plus, and the unlimited. 
we recommend that they're unlimited for everybody crossing the Atlantic or doing any crossings of more than two or three days. So with this, you get, I'll just scroll down and you can see here the plan details. Activation is free. It's $139.95 per calendar month from the 1st to the 31st of the month. <coughs> Excuse me. For that, you get 150 minutes of voice calling per month to any landline or cellular line in the world. You get unlimited data minutes, which means you can download as much data as you want. And data is predict wind weather forecasts, and data is also emails. So you essentially get unlimited emails and unlimited weather forecasting. You get, um, on yeah, and then on top of that, if you go over your minutes, then you get charged some extras, but that's that's fine. You never normally go over. So $139 per month. Um, you can buy some accessories here and the installation kit, you can see it comes with 12 meters or 39 feet of cable. So you'd run this from the back of the boat. You'd install this towards the back of the boat somewhere, not in the mast, because it can get blanketed by the, um, you know, the mast and you can get chafe on the cable inside the rig and you don't know about it. So we recommend putting it on the back of the boat. Um, and then that cable runs through to the Iridium Go in the middle of the boat. And so this is what comes with the Iridium Go. It's got the charging cables and, and things like that. So I'll just, um, as well as the Iridium Go, so there's three things that you need. You need the Iridium Go or some sort of satellite communication device. You need to have the airtime plan so that that, that is um, connecting it to the satellite so you can make the phone calls, send the messages. But to access our predict wind weather forecasting, you also need to have the standard or professional level of predict wind. So you end up with two separate subscriptions, one for the satellites to join and so you can make those calls and messages and things. And then also the predict wind forecast subscription to give you access to our weather data, to the grid files that Nick was talking about, to the weather routing, departure planning, all those great tools that we have to keep you safe. You need to have the standard or pro. Um, and Nick will go through, um, you know, what, what's available on the Pro. We've added some amazing new features lately with wave routing and AIS data. So, you know, if I was going to recommend anything, I would always say the professional level. So just briefly, we try to give you as much information as possible, and we're happy to help where we can. But we have this awesome help centre with every, every bit of information that a question somebody's asked us. And so you'll see here there's sections on Iridium Go, what are grib files, you know, what's the offshore app. So definitely have a look at this. You can find it just at help.predictwin.com. Um, so that's definitely worth looking at. And like I said, use our team as a resource. Um, we also have this shop. We don't just sell the Iridium Go. So this is basically where you can get everything we offer. So forecast subscriptions, like I was saying, the standard or professional level is needed when you're crossing um, oceans. Um, the Iridium Go here and all the parts that go with it. The Data Hub we'll cover later, um, a fantastic GPS tracking device. The YB3i that I was talking about. And you know, I, I, I really rate this product because it is a backup communication device should anything happen to your Iridium Go. Um, we get asked a lot if you know we sell t-shirts and things so we've got some merch there and the the sim cards so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and just check if I've missed anything in my little list um, Nick is there anything else that you can think of that I need to go over apps apps oh yeah okay so when you um, use the Iridium Go you need to use specific apps and you download them onto your mobile phone. So your phone here, um, like your iPhone or your Android tablet or your iPad becomes your handset to make a phone call, to send a message, to write emails and to download weather through the um, offshore app. So you actually have to download some specific apps that are supplied by Iridium onto your phone and then you use those apps to make the phone calls and things. So like I was saying, you, you connect your phone through Wi-Fi to the Iridium Go unit. And then to make a call, I would just open the app on my phone, 
type in the number or use my contacts that are pre-saved and then your phone becomes the handset through that Wi-Fi connection. Um, the same with Iridium Mail. So there's two different apps. There's the Iridium Go app and the Iridium Mail app. So you'd need both of those on your device. And then of course, you need the offshore app to get the weather forecasting. So yeah, anything else you can think of, Nick? You're on mute, Nick. Yeah, no, I was on another screen. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was um I was finding the screen with the apps on it. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's all good. Thank you, Karen. Um no worries. Oh uh, yeah, you can have a rest. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, cool. Uh yeah. Uh, as Karen mentioned, um if you have questions, reach out to the support team. They are amazing. Um you know, Karen's uh, done a, a few laps of the planet on a boat herself. Um, you know, she's uh, definitely worth talking to. Um, so I'll just, I'll jump into a screen share. And here we go. Uh, so Karen just talked about those apps. Where are they? So the, the, the apps for the Iridium Go, uh, that there is the Iridium Go app. That's what you do your uh, SMS and your phone calls on. Uh, and then the Iridium Mail app for doing your email. And then the Offshore app. So just for the Offshore app, uh, these two here, the Iridium Go app and the Iridium Mail app, they only work on your Android phone or tablet or your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, the Offshore app works on... PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, Android tablet, Android phone, um, and actually even a Chromebook. Um, so the offshore app can uh, talk to the Iridium Go um, it, it with, you know, on a PC or a Mac. So sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you can only use, um, you know, the Iridium Go with a, a phone or a tablet. Uh, it's it's actually more it's all software based. So if you have uh, PC or Mac, and you have the offshore app, that will actually also talk to the Iridium Go and the Iridium Go connection. So yeah, it's and the reason the reason we want you to 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 do that is you need a you need something that works anywhere in the world uh, and at any time. Uh, you don't want to be left without weather. The key to safety is updating your weather and weather routing. So I'm going to jump into talking about weather routing um, and, and, and why we update that. And, um, and, and yeah, so, so first of all, we're going to start talking about uh, how, how, you know, I mentioned before that the, um, the weather router can see, where the routing can see where you are at any space and time and you know what what's going to happen uh, with the weather, and um, and where you're going to be when these weather events happen. And um, you know this is not uh, just a play tool. This is a, a serious uh, thing that can actually uh, keep you safe, uh, keep you out of harm's way. Um, you know, seamanship is required, uh, but. You can use the information you get in here. Okay, so actually we're gonna sail into something nasty. Before you get there, you can say, I'm gonna slow my boat down so that that system might go in front of us. Or you might change um, the way that you're gonna run things on board. For instance, if we get, if we can see high levels uh, with in the wave routing there, if we see high levels of uh, vertical acceleration or roll, we might say, okay, so that we know that we're going to run into that weather tomorrow. Uh, so we might brief everyone uh, on the boat that, that we're going to run into this bad weather or this bad sea state. And so we're going to change the way that, um, you know, we run our safety on board. For instance, if we're going to have high vertical acceleration or roll or boat slamming, we can say, okay, so you don't go on deck unless you're clipped on. You know, that may not be your usual protocol. Um, I mean, that might be what you do at night anyway, but we might do that round the clock so that, you know, because we know that there's going to be particularly lumpy sea, 
the rule, you know, the safety rule is now that you don't go on deck unless you're clipped on. So that's that's what we're talking about. We can, um, you know, change our course. We can plot a different course. Um, we can change our safety protocols on board and use this information to, to make those decisions. So how do we know where your boat is going to be uh, in a weather system um, or, you know, as in through the passage? We use uh, what we call polars. Uh, so polars are essentially how fast the software thinks your boat is going to go. And so this is something that you want to work on. This is something if you haven't looked at this before and, and, and it's something that you should be using, um, you could look at this before we do the webinar next week. So to set up our polars, we can do, uh, really we want to do this um, in the Predict Wind app or my preference is the, uh, the forecast website. The forecast website at the moment is the only place we can set up our wave polars. So um, you come into forecast.predictwind.com and you go to tools and weather routing and then we're up here in routing preferences. And so here I have my boat polar. So you may go, I've got no idea how fast my boat goes in any given conditions. And that's okay, because you can start to work that one out. Um, we have here, we have this list, what we call a predefined polar. So I click on this little list here and you will see we have uh, up the top here, we have some generic um, polars for just, you know, 45 foot sailboat, 45 foot catamaran. Um, we also have all these other uh, types of boats in here. So your boat might be in here. Uh, it might not, but there might also be a boat in here that you know is pretty similar to yours. Um, and you can, you can, you can select, you know, that boat that's similar to yours and um, go from there. So, I'm going to stick with the with the Beneteau there just because uh, that's what I had set up before. If we um, if we have a power boat, we can set up uh, a power polar. Um, if we wanted to, um, if if our boat wasn't in the predefined list, and we had a boat that really went about the same speed. Uh, regardless, you know, um, of, of what the wind speed was, you know, especially a bigger, a, a, you know, big heavy displacement boat, you know, might sort of do five knots upwind, six knots downwind um, on a, you know, on a good day. So we can just put that, those boat speeds in there, you know, so upwind at 50 degrees true wind angle um, and at 90 and then downwind. So it says 160 uh, and this is in 15 knots of wind. Um, but really, I would I would try and find a predefined one. Uh, we also have the advanced polar here. Um, so this is if you really want to get into it, uh, you can go through. And so for it, we've got our wind speeds down here, um, and then we've got our true wind angle here, and the boat speed. And so we can we can adjust that. So you could have your predefined polar here. You could choose the the, the Beneteau 473 or whatever your boat is, and you can actually copy that polar over to the advanced polar and then you can adjust it. And I'll talk a little bit about um, why we might do that later. I mean, well, we want to get it as close as we can for our boat and how we sail our boat. Um, so another thing about polars here is we can actually just adjust the whole polar. So by percentage, 100% is... Is, is what the numbers say in here. So above 100% means you think that you're going to go slightly faster. Uh, below 100% means that you're going to go, you know, whatever that percentage is, slower. You'll see here, this is a reasonably important one, at night. And so at night, we might go, actually, we want to be more cautious at night. We, um, you know, we've only got one person on watch. And so we actually sail the boat um, slower than we would normally. Uh, and so we, we can, at night, uh, the, the, the weather router can tell, you know, what, you know, when it's um, day and when it's night, and it, it, it will slow you down at night to give you a more accurate, um, 
you know, position of where you'll be in the next few days um, or, or 10. So having getting, getting this stuff right is important. Um, getting these polars right is important. You can make polar speed adjustments from within the offshore app. So you can change these while you're at sea and, um, and, and you, you can change these percentages. Tack and drive penalties, don't worry about that. That's more of a racing thing. Um, we do have a motoring setting here. So if you're gonna end up um, in a big high pressure system and there's no wind, you might decide to motor. So you can turn that on or off. Um, and, um, and, and so therefore the boat will, the router will assume that you're motoring once you go below a certain uh, boat speed. Route defaults. So, you know, this is probably a little bit more um, important if you're going around islands or you're doing coastal stuff, uh, but you can change uh, the depth. So the router will not route you into uh, waters that are below uh, whatever you set here, you know, depth wise. Um, really, really good for giving you, a, again, a more accurate route. Um, and so you, you know, you don't want it to be um, bouncing you off, uh, you know, routing you up uh, shallow areas. It's not a navigation tool. Navigation is part of your seamanship, but it gives you a more accurate route. So everything we're talking about here is about trying to get that weather routing to give you really accurate um, uh, estimations of where you're going to be in relation to the weather and how to get there a bit, as best you can. Uh, tidal and ocean currents. <clears throat> we will have a brief look at this in a bit, and we will, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we, we can change which current model the uh, the router is using. Um, you'll, yeah, I mean, we'll have a look at that. So there are some advanced routing adjustments down there. They are race boat things, um, more for sort of a mocha sailors that, that, that they like to do that. Uh, you can set the router for fastest time or for comfort. I'm not a big fan of the comfort. I can understand why people use it. They don't want to... Um, you know, if you had to go at a certain time where you wanted to try and avoid some stuff, you want to try and avoid a, a particular weather system, the router will do that. Be careful with it. It will send you a long way uh, out of, out, away from the run line to avoid these conditions. Uh, personally, I'd always run for fastest. And then if I didn't like the look of something, I might put a waypoint in to avoid a particular piece of weather or I could put a boundary in to avoid a particular area. So we've got our boat polar set up there. Um, and then we can come here and we can set up our wave polar. So why do we want to do this? Is that this will help uh, our um, software create a computer uh, a hydrodynamic model of your boat. And so therefore, we can give you information as to, along your weather route, how your boat's going to react to the different wave states. So we know that the, you know, there's not just one wave out there, um, you know, on, on the ocean. Yes, if you're lucky, you're going to have the wind wave and the and the swell. They're going to be doing the same thing. Often, if there's a weather system has gone past or we've gone around it, we're going to get, um, you know, we're going to have. A primary, we're going to have a wind wave, and then we're going to have a primary swell, a secondary swell, and a tertiary swell. And sometimes they can all be doing different things, and it makes things pretty uncomfortable. And, um, you know, that might be something we want to look at in our departure planning. Um, you know, is that a go or no go decision? Um, but also, we can look at that when we are underway, and we might decide that we want to, you know, maybe push a bit faster to get in front of a particular system, or we want to actually pull back um, in extreme circumstances, we might decide that we're going to hove to, to let a system go through. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, when I see people, they, you know, sail into weather, you know, nasty weather systems, I really wonder why, what they were thinking, um, you know, to do that. That's why we have our SATCOMs, so that we can actually update our weather routing and weather every 12 hours after the models have updated. Um, and that's that's plenty of warning. Um, we've got the GMDSS warnings in there as well. Uh, and then they, we can read them in the text format. Um, 
and we can also see them on the map. Um, the text format will have more um, information about what's going to happen in the future. Um, and so we don't want to ignore that, uh, the text format. Um, soon the map that we display there will have, um, you know, more, more warnings for the future. Um, so yeah, we have this set up so that we can see how our boat's going to um, act, you know, in these different wave states. Um, we might, we might, we can, we can use the predefined setting there, but you know, like we're doing a big passage, we might have dinghies and lots of food and you know people and gear and you know we live on the boat. They, these are the usually the um, the manufacturers' numbers, and so you know you might have another ton of gear on the boat. Um, you know, I, sus <laughs> I suspect these these parts here wouldn't have changed, but you can set them up for your. Um, to match your boat. Uh, ignore this part here, that is the old uh, wave polar that we had. Uh, we want to just enable the wave polar here on off. Keep this one over here off. And we can adjust these dimensions here. I'll talk, I'll, I'll mention that again next week because we want to know about, um, you know, the wave polar stuff is awesome. So the weather routing here, um, I have this weather route that I ran before. And uh, we're sorry, we actually had, we looked at the departure planning for this before. We'll just quickly look at this, uh, the tables in here. Um, and when I mentioned uh, our polars before, how do we know, um, you know, how fast our boat's going at, at any particular time? In the, in the weather. So this is what it looks like. This is the output from the router. And so uh, in the true wind speed of 11.1 .1 knots, true wind angle of 50. So we're sailing upwind and the S is for starboard. So we're on starboard tack, sailing upwind at 50 degrees and we're doing 6.3 knots over ground. So that sounds pretty realistic to me. Um, but you know you might not sail your boat that well, so you might need to uh, start you know adjust these things. So you can see here we've got all these different wind speeds, you know, and twenty knots uh, at a uh, hundred degrees true wind angle, eight knots um, over ground. So and you'll see here we've got these these um, little warnings popping up, and that's just to alert us to something that's going on. So if we click on it. We can see there it says vertical acceleration, vertical acceleration, vertical acceleration. So this is something that we want to keep an eye out for um, is in, in looking at these things. And so if I want to find out more about that, I could come over here to the to the wave tab and I could say, OK, what's going on? You know, what, what, what's this? Um, you know, where are these warnings coming from? And so you can see here we have the combined wind wave swell, and then we have our wind wave, primary, secondary, and tertiary. And if we come down here uh, where these warnings are, and we can just see that with each of these different things that we've got some different directions there, and um, different uh, wave height and different period. So that's what's causing that vertical acceleration. I'm a big fan of looking at the graphs for this information. Um, so this is a graph, these graphs are related and all this information in these tables are related to our weather routing. The grips on the map, when we go into the offshore app, which we will do in a minute, they, um, you know, we've, we've chosen, we've got, uh, they're for our visual uh, cues of, of what we're looking at. So here we are in the graphs. And so I can see <clears throat> my wind speed throughout the route of all the different models. And you know, there's a bit of variation there, um, but this is over a really uh, quite a long time period. And what we'll see, and we'll talk about this when we go back to the map, is you'll see in the near term, the models will, will nearly always be quite close together. You may see an outlier there, but in the near term, and what I mean by that is the, the zero to 12, zero to 24 hours from now, we've, we've usually got a, a pretty definitive answer as to what, where we're going and what the weather's gonna do. And then over time, you will see the, the accuracy of the models may 
um, you know, they may spread out, they may think different things are going to happen. And so you'll see a bigger, a bigger spread as time goes on. And so again, that's why we're always updating our weather routing over our satcoms. So we always got the latest weather. You know, we don't, we don't go around using five day old weather. So we have our true wind direction, uh, rain, you know, we're sailors. Why do we care about rain? We care about rain because uh, with rain, we can often see uh, volatile weather. So whether that's um, you know, thunderstorms or high gusts, you know, so we have the average wind speed. So everything that we look at in our groups, unless we're looking at a gust map, um, is an average wind speed. And then, uh, and the weather route, it uses average wind speeds. It does not use gusts to calculate your, um, your route. So we have our rain, and then we can put these things together, you know, like we, if we have rain in Cape, CAPE is convective available potential energy. We put those things together and it's probably better to look at those on the map. Um, and we can start to sort of go, okay, we're gonna have rain, CAPE, and then we might have strong gust as well. It's actually gonna be pretty nasty. Again, we might um, change our safety protocols on board. We might, um, you know, we might know that, that that bad weather's coming tonight. So we're gonna sail with less sail overnight tonight because we can't see what's coming at us overnight or just be more conservative. So, and again, if we put this together with our wave height uh, and our, our wave period, um, you know, we get a bit of a picture, but if we come down here <clears throat> and we can see the influence of the waves on our polar, so the waves are slowing our boat down. So anything, 100 is the, is the normal, is the, you know, flat water, no effect of the wave. And you can see the the uh, the wave is slowing us down, and it will also, if we're going with it, it will it will speed us up. And so we can see it's slowing us down there uh, as we're going into those waves. Um, and we can see our roll, <coughs> which is uh, RMS, so the root mean square of the roll. Anything above four starts to get pretty nasty. I have had feedback from customers that anything above three starts to get pretty nasty. And so this is where we would use this information. Um, to think about how, I mean, to me, this is a no-go or go situation. You know, we wouldn't have gone on this passage. Um, but if we were, what what can we do? Um, you know, do we do we turn around? Do we change our course? Do we plot a new course? Do we go, you know, what what do we do? But we plan and, and we use this information to, to, to make good decisions. Again, vertical acceleration, anything above 0.2 is pretty nasty. And as you can see here, this gets really nasty. Um, also, boat slamming. We don't, <laughs> anything above 50 is, is bad. And we don't see this uh, too often. And so now that I've um, we've looked at this horrible route, I'm actually going to stop sharing this screen. And I am going to do another screen share. And we're going to come over to the offshore app. <clears throat> so I have now changed over from the predict wind forecast website to the offshore app and so this is the offshore app this is what i can use with my um iridium go or um a, an iridium certus or inmarsat um connection uh this is this is this is the the software i use and anytime i'm going offline i want to use the offshore app so You'll see here I've uh, run this weather route, um, and it's 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 it, it, actually I think um, if you left today things would be looking pretty rosy. Um, <clears throat> next week I'm going to go through all of the settings uh, that we would use in the offshore app, and um, and how we would um, use it. So, but I want to. Uh, turn a few things on that um, that I haven't turned on. Um, so actually, before we do that, let's just have a look at our route. So I mentioned before that sometimes the models agree and, and sometimes they don't. This is a classic example of the models being in, agreeance, in agreement. Um, if I just run this route through, here's my boats. Or did I start in the future? I 
down to it. I've wrecked it. Anyway, we've got you can see here we've got all our routes are all 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 the models. So the different colors here, they're all our um they're all the different weather models. So it's using our same polar, our same boat speed, and it's it's showing us um, you know, where each of those weather models would would want to take us with the um you know with that boat polar and the fact that they all agree um to at least here is really good um you know we've got no um you know no no real change between any of the models to here and then we only have the gfs that wants us to go slightly different and so to be fair if i was um i would stick with the majority but the reality is we're going to run a new weather route here and a new weather out here. So maybe let's do that. Um, I'm going to click on download. And so, so I will go through all these settings uh, next week. Uh, you see, we've got our start timers now. We're getting our GMDSS. Um, I've got uh, this is way too big for our satellite download um, because I'm, 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 yeah, getting stuff like cur um, currents. Um, and I won't get them because I've already downloaded them. Anyway, we'll just click on next and we'll do a download. Okay, so <clears throat> I would need to uh, make my file smaller for my satellite connection, but let's say I was um, about to depart, I've got Wi-Fi, I would download everything I can get. Um, and so, and I would have, I've already got the currents, I downloaded them before we did the webinar. Um, so you'll see here, our weather route has sent, it, sent our, um, our starting position and our finish position off. Um, and if we were on the uh, Iridium uh, Go, for instance, there'd be a little white dot on our screen and we could move our start waypoint to where the um, to where the GPS position says that we are on the, um, on the map. Or we could have, um, I'll just click over to the map here. We could have put our lat long in here to, um, you know, to, for our start position. And then we've also got the lat long for our end position over here. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about that more next week. So you'll see here, I moved that start position to as though we'd been sailing for a bit. We've headed, we've headed south from the Canaries here and we've come down and, um, and our routes are still really uh, wanting us to go somewhat the same way. Um, so it's, you know, it's uh, nearly uh, 11 o'clock in the morning here in New Zealand. And then like, if I come through here and I know that uh, by here, um, the forecast would have updated. So again, I would, I would run my weather routing from there. Uh, I can come in here and I can turn on this AIS data and you'll see all of a sudden I can see uh, all these boats around me. So um, why do we want to see this? Um, I'll just move my zoom control, sorry. So this is um, a, a more of a warning thing. So this has given me the, the position of all of these boats within a 300 nautical mile radius of my position. And I can click on any of these boats and find out what they are and where they're going. Um, so really helpful for, uh, especially, um, you know, coming into your, uh, well, any watch really, um, you know, is there at least some traffic that we know of out there? Uh, you know, are we coming into a high traffic zone? Are we going to cross a shipping lane? Is there a fishing fleet in front of us? Um, if there was a fishing fleet, for instance, we could come up here and we could, um, if I click on this button here, let's say that there was, you know, this was our route where we we're going. Whoops, shouldn't have done that. Um, hang on. I could add a boundary, you know, we don't want to go through here because it's going to send us through uh, a shipping lane. Oh, so, sorry, through a fishing fleet. And so once I set that boundary, my weather routing would avoid this area. So 
it's a nice a nice tool to have. It doesn't replace, of course, it doesn't replace your AIS on board, but that only sees about 30 nautical miles. So this is more of a, you know, what am I going to see in the next, uh, you know, 12 to 24 hours? And do I need to make decisions around that? So that's the, um, the AIS um, uh, a feature and a, a really nice thing to have um, and, 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 and know what's out there. Um, yeah, pretty cool. So, and especially because it's picking up all the satellite AIS, uh, which is mainly the ships. Um, it's very cool. So what else did I have to cover up there? I realized that I'm running out of time. Um, we did uh, look at our warnings before, which was our extreme weather warnings. So they're going to give us, uh, you know, whether we have, um, you know, whether there's potential for uh, thunderstorms, uh, you know, like, so why do we want to know about that? Because again, we might prepare differently how we're going to sail the boat today, tonight, knowing that there's the potential for thunderstorms. Um, that, you know, there's a, a really big difference between our average wind speed and our gusts. Again, that's an indicator of instability. Uh, so we might set up our boat differently. Um, you know, the, the we talked before about the 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 wave stuff you know is it going to be uh, nasty um for the you know wave uh, routing you know is it going to be a high vertical acceleration you know is there someone on board that gets seasick you know do we need to give them seasick pills now because i can uh tell you that having sailed with people that get really seasick the sooner you give them the seasick pills the better if you know you're coming into nasty stuff um i mean these, these are all uh, lots of things that we can look at. So, and then we, let's just possibly cover off some of the basics of our weather routing um, just before I wrap this up. So you'll see here, uh, we're looking at the ECMWF model. I can come in here and I can change which model I'm looking at. So when I change the model, uh, I will, it changes where my little boat is on the screen. And so that means, the weather behind me here is the um, is the UKMO model, and so I can run my route through, and I can look at um, you know what the UKMO model does, says it's going to do, uh, you know GFS, ECMWF, Spire, um, and then I can change my different parameters. Um, you know, let's go back to the ECMWF, and I can look at the rain. Um, you know, so the rain is my indicator of frontal bands and, um, and, and you know, and systems and whether they're going to be, um, you know, whether they're going to usually if you see the rain and then you see the cape, uh, you know that you're going to get, uh, it's going to have a bit of a bang to it if it's a front. We can look at our wave data here, um, you know, so we can. Uh, get an overview of, of, of the wave. This is combined wind wave and swell. Um, so you can see there that it's going with us. And then you see here where we where that stops, that's where we run out of our, that's our 10 days of weather. So we've run out of our 10 days of gribs, but that's not too much of a problem because the weather router will um, continue on and it uses the ECMWF ensemble average uh, to calculate the rest of our route. Once we get a further across the Atlantic, we could we'll be, obviously we'll be downloading weather every 12 hours after each model um, run. And we will, um, you know, our 10 days will, will get us to our destination. Uh, but it does, it, the weather routing will use the uh, ECMWF Ensemble to get us to the end. If, when you're on the web version, um, it will actually flick over to the Ensemble. You'll see, but you'll see that it's, very, it's definitely very averaged. Um, we have our GMDSS um, features in here. There's not too much in our area, uh, but it will show us troughs and ridges and uh, you know fronts. Uh, and we'll, we'll get a bit carried away with my magic mouse there. Um, you know all sorts of things there. Uh, the AIS stuff we can uh, need to move my zoom controls again. We can turn it on or off. Uh, if we didn't want to see them, we can turn it off. The GMDSS, again, if we didn't like that, we can turn it off. Um, and then this little control down here is when I press play, how fast the route animates. Um, 
I mentioned the GMDSS before, and yes, we have the visual display. We can also see the, um, the written display. When you look at this, you can probably see why we did it, but worth working out where you are and, and if there's any um, warning, you know, moderate to poor visibility, thundery showers in the southwest, uh, Cape Verde. So lots of good information in there. Always download that. Uh, I mentioned before the ocean data. I can change which model I'm looking at here um, for my ocean data and, um, and compare what's going on. Yes, there's not heaps of currents here, but if I actually zoom in on this, um, you know, you see here that, you know, coming out of here, there actually is ocean currents here. There's a, you know, this um, gyre here. And, you know, so if you come this way, you might all of a sudden wonder what on earth is going on through here that you've run into this rough sea. And it'll be because you've, you, you've, you've sailed straight into the, um, straight into this uh, current coming with you. You've got the wind coming down here and you've got this current coming towards you there. And so that's, you know, in play a lot of places across the ocean, but it, it, especially once you um, come more over to, uh, you know, these parts of the world, you get some pretty uh, intense currents. Knowing what these currents are doing uh, is really important. The weather router uses the currents. Um, GPS tracking. So I haven't really touched on this too much, um, you'll see here I've got my AIS on. I can actually clear that and get rid of it all. Um, I'm in, uh, I added myself to a rally. Uh, it's the Viking Explorers rally. They head, um, they, they do their, uh, an Atlantic crossing in the next uh, month or two. Um, I added myself to their, to their rally. Um, obviously, they're not, none of them are underway yet. Um, but what, what I can see in here is A, I can see where they are. Um, and B, I can see what, uh, if they've done a blog post, I can see what they're saying. So, um, okay, so uh, I could have, I could understand, I'm not sure what language that is. Um, German? Not sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, I can see all their blog posts. So I can see what's happening on board their boat. I can do this in the offshore app. I can download that. Um, I will stop sharing my screen and I will talk about GPS tracking a little bit more. And I will, I realize that we are over time and I will wrap this up really, really shortly. Um, Google Chrome. So uh, yeah, we just mentioned GPS tracking. So if I come over here, um, whether you are using uh, predict wind tracking or whether you're in a, um, a rally or a, a race that is using YB tracking. So you see here I have got some YB tracking, uh, YB events selected. I've actually got the Golden Globe and so we can see all of them. Let's say you're doing the ARC and you're using YB uh, trackers. You can add that rally to your, um, to your, to your tracking. And so you can see where everyone else is in the offshore app. So you have, um, so you know where other people are in your in your rally. Um, if you're racing, uh, it's nice to know where other people are because you can use that strategically. If you're cruising, it's nice to know that there's other people out there and um, you know where they are. <coughs> I don't want to do that. So and but I can also do my GPS tracking. If I click on that. Um, and so there you can see that um, some of the people in the in the Viking Explorers rally, um, or I can set up my own group. I can create a group, and I could just add my buddy boat to it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna sail across the Atlantic together. I can add my buddy boat. Um, what does your GPS tracking look like? I have added Brickhouse's um, URL in here. I'm sure that Rebecca won't mind uh, that I've added her track in here. Um, but you can see if you are doing, uh, you know, any passage, having this record of your trip is pretty cool. You can see that she's got all of her blog posts 
uh, down here. Um, she's just got a data hub and, but you know, I can click on any of these dots and uh, we can see what's, what, what's happening and on her passage. So yeah, the GPS tracking is, 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 is really cool. So I will stop sharing my screen there. Um, and I will just say thank you to everybody that did register and did come along um, to this. We're blown away by uh, the number of people uh, that, that registered for this webinar. It's, it's awesome to see uh, how many people are interested in Predict Wind and, and, and what we're doing. And, um, and we're always trying to do it better for you. So yeah, thank you for, 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 for joining and for registering.